Um, I'm Siri Mon Osran from the Colonial Collectives Foundation. So today I'd like to talk to you about one of our research initiative that we have at the foundation. It's called IBD Plexus. Um, and I'm going to describe a little bit more about that, the study cohort that we currently have and time permits. Uh, we can also do a little bit demo because we're also using our I2B2 web clients as our credit tool. So first of all, um, about Crohn and Colitis Foundation, uh, our mission is to find cure for Crohn disease and ulcerative colitis and to improve the quality of care of children and adults affected by these diseases. Crohn disease and ulcerative colitis collectively call um, inflammatory bowel disease or IBD. They are chronic inflammatory condition of gastrointestinal tract with abnormal response from immune system. Currently, it's estimated that it affects um, over 1.6 million Americans and um, only over 60, uh, 70,000 uh, newly diagnosed each year. The disease can affect anyone but tends to run in families and more prevalent in certain ethnic groups. So he thinks uh, the need of um, omics and genetics information. Due to heterogeneous of disease and lack of uh, predictive biomarkers, the foundation have uh, launched the initiative to accelerate the uh, precision medicine in this domain. So the, our program IBD Praxis uh, was designed to maximize opportunity for IBD research. We launched it as a national scale research information exchange platform. It's designed to centralize both data as well as biosamples from various diverse research cohorts that we have. Most of these uh, research cohorts were done in clinical care settings, as well as collecting data from patient experience. We do enrich the patient data set through research initiative data generation projects. And the, the program uh, aim to advance science and accelerate progress toward precision medicine and ultimately transform the care of IBD patients. So the data that we collected, we uh, decided to support activities across multiple research continuum from discovery, clinical development, as well as post approval. So I use the word um, the exchange platform because this is supposed to be a collaborative exchange network that we're bringing together diverse stakeholders and want to break down all the data silos. So we have stakeholders from patients, academic researchers, industries, as well as clinicians. We're working toward um, uh, pre um contributions and discussions and derive that um, into IBD Plexus program. And, and the data exchange concepts is also coming from if you derive any molecular data from the biosamples that we collect and centralize, the data also come back to, to the program as well. Right now, we all have over 60 contributing sites um, that into these programs, uh, seven industry pharma members, um, we have four research cohorts, 10,000 10, of patients, and millions of data points. The IBD process is a result of um, our initiative um, that began almost 10 years ago um, in that tried to find out what is the, the um, challenge in that prevent fighting the cure in IBD disease. So we, uh, we like to thank the, all the farming premier members, IBD researchers in this domain, um, and the, the generous funders from the um, Hemsley Charitable Trust that help us build into this program. So we call this the program or initiative because there's so many different components uh, involved in along the pipeline. We have the patient and clinician engagement platform that collect the data directly uh, using case report form as well as patient reported outcomes. We centralize all the bio samples collect from multiple cohorts into uh, our central bio banks. 
we require that all the, those bio samples in order to generate molecular data, we would use central reference labs. So this, the data that generate from multiple projects can be comparable and eliminate of some of the assays uh, bias. We also have consent from patients who be able to import their electronic health records directly from the site that they participated in. And all of the patient information, um, including PHI, PII, we centralize in the secure infrastructure and then they identify those patients and make the data available in the analytic platform with the researcher portal. So currently we have four different uh, cohorts uh, available uh, for our researchers. The two of the cohorts are uh, new and we spin out the program at the same time as we generate and concept uh, of IBD Nexus. So those are the Spark IBD, uh, which is an adult prospective research cohort. And we also have IBD Chorus, which is a quality of care program that is a mix of academics as well as um, community sites uh, to improve the quality of care of the patients. Two of our uh, other cohorts that we have are periodic risk study, um, which is a uh, periodic Crohn's disease patient, and IBD partners, which is an online only survey cohort. So just to get a sense of what we are collecting a little bit more, uh, for Spark IBD, the objective of the cohort itself is to identify predictors of response to IBD therapies and predictors of disease relapse among responders to therapies. And that's because um, many of the IBD patients right now currently get prescribed to like biologics. Uh, some patients respond well, some patients are not, and some patients also you know, stop responding over time. So this is a longitudinal study. Um, right now we have 17 sites. We collect clinical data, patient reported data, importing electronic health records, collect multiple type of biosamples, blood, intestinal tissues, as well as stool. The biosamples, we start generating molecular data, both from genotyping, transcriptomic, metagenomics, and we'll also generate additional lab data as well. The one of the main study features from this is the use of um, uh, something that we call IBD Smart Form, which is a module within EPIC EHR system that is collect things, um, information about patient phenotypes that typically only written in, in notes and turn that into categorical and defined uh, data elements that we also import directly to our platform alongside uh, electronic health records. And also the, all the um, data and biosamples collections are standardized across multiple sites in this case. IBD Chorus uh, is, um, the objective is to improve the quality of care uh, to deliver to patients by defining standard of care IBD. The patients also adopt um, IBD at longitudinal and, uh, uh, collection. Right now, it's involved um, 30 sites, as I mentioned, it's a makeup academic community as well as private practice. And the aim is to track outcomes and, and process measures. In this one, uh, similar to um, Spark IBD, we also collect clinical data, uh, patient reported data, and electronic health records. Um, we, we don't collect biosamples in this case. The study features is to aim for improved patient engagement. So when patients report um, that information, they also have access to this, the, the patient engagement platform, be able to see that track and their progress and using dashboard. They also fill in something called previously survey that you know, describe their concerns, their current symptoms, um, their current medications in order to prepare themselves to um, to for the visit with the physicians. Mm -hmm. We already seen uh, some of the uh, information that's shared across multiple sites uh, that's in, improved some of the urgent care um, utilization uh, once they were able to share the practice on how we treat uh, IBD patients. We also in development of a clinical care pathways and be able to strengthen partner and provider relationship. 
Another um, cohort that collect molecular and, and bio samples data is pediatric risk cohort. In this one, it was launched um, almost about over 10 years ago. It is an inception cohort, which means that the patients are all treatment naive uh, from, multi from 25 sites in the US and three sites in Canada. The patient will follow up right now up to eight years, um, which is extended the day follow up period. And the objective is to identify at diagnosis um, the risk factor in developing complications and severe course of disease in pediatric patients. So in this one is a scheduled visit. Uh, we collect clinical data at baseline and as well as every six months. Um, we already generate multiple type of molecular data from genotyping, transcriptomics, uh, metagenomics, and we still have um, biosamples available. The study features in this is to model, to develop the predictive model for risk stratification uh, at the time of diagnosis. And one of the uh, hallmark um, publication that we already have uh, is about the prediction of complicated disease cause in children uh, that was published in Lancet of 2017. Another cohort that we have is IVD partners, which is uh, objective is to study the impact of this disease in everyday life um, in large and diversified population of IVD patients. So this is an online survey, all patient reported, um, both diagnosis and outcomes and other type of patient generated data such as variables. We also had a pilot how patient can connect that ESR um, and other things going on as well. The um, data was collected as a baseline survey as well as follow up every, every six months. The study features are to understand the issues for um, that facing IBD patients, and it is a like a forum vehicle for additional uh, studies because the patients really engage, be able to ask the question that's concerned to them, and the researcher in this cohort also responding and prioritizing some of that uh, patient concern and ideas and develop that into a real study. So in this one, we have over 44 abstracts and 33 manuscripts just from this cohort alone. I'm just gonna skip this real quick. Um, this slide show a little bit more on, on the um, patient characteristics across different cohorts. Um, I just think a couple of things of fun fact to learn. Um, so for, for example, for genders, um, it's pretty much like almost 50% breakdowns across cohorts, except IBD partners, um, which you know tend to, is known for self-registry patients uh, that you know females tend to do more surveys than male. So that one is heavily geared to uh, have 70% females compared to male. Um, and others uh, uh, like age at enrollment, a similar breakdown across uh, different cohorts, except risk visits of pediatric patients. Uh, we have a roughly about 60% Crohn's disease patient compared to UC um, um, across different cohorts as well. Uh, again, except risk because that one is, we want um, the aims is to develop, uh, to register the patient for Crohn's disease and just different breakdown of um, different med medications that were described. Um, this slide shows current uh, molecular data that we have uh, from the wrist as well as spark IBD. So it's just varieties of um, genotyping, transcriptomics, uh, as well as metagenomics that we have available for this program. So in terms of, you know, why I'm, I'm here to, to uh, talk about the, the program is because we are using and utilizing the I2B2 web client as a first step in our researcher portal. I'll use that as a user interface in order to query the database and generate um, an validated hypothesis. After that, the, the workflow would be, you, know, you can use other visualization tools, refine the criteria, be able to, re researcher able to request the data, um, as well as develop the proposals in order to uh, gain access to biosamples. The data can be um, 
uh, the data delivery are automated um, in a DNA defined manner, and you can download, uh, users can download directly via the research portal. If a user have a proposal that you know, require access to limited data sets with patient identifiers, uh, that would require uh, additional IRB approval. And again, the, the, the sharing uh, concept for this program is the raw data. Any raw data that generate from our biosamples would deposit back into the program. So here's a little screenshot. Um, we just have the rest of the portal kind of wrap around the um, I2V2 web client. And I, I, you know, this is the first time um, since the program went live. We also right now have academic uh, request for proposal to gain access to both data and all uh, biosamples uh, into this program. So some of the key data are listed here. Um, even though the deadline coming up, if you anyone interested in and be able to help us accelerate the science, um, looking into IBD research, I'm happy to uh, chat more. Um, um, but I'll take any questions then. Thank you. Yes. For an amazing resource. Um, so, if you're not one of the investigators who contributed data, and if you're not already uh, an IBE researcher, but you have access to an IRB, is it possible for any uh, external person to access some of this data? Yes, so that's one of my last slide that right now we do um, use that via the uh, RFP process. So this RFP process is for accessing uh, IBD Plexus resource. Um, it's the first year we launched that because um, in the past it has been our, um, the, I, okay, I'm not sure. It has been over our contributing site as well as the pharma uh, member to access. So now we also open up to additional um, people to be able to request an access. And we do limit it that just not because we want to you know, hold it on the data. We want the data to get used as much as possible. It's just because we have to have sustainability you know, model in order to maintain um, operational, how we you know, need to input the data, as well as the support resource. Thank you. Yes, Stephen. Um, I'm interested in how in the constraints that you put on researchers who want to use the samples that we call. So you, if they generate data on those samples, samples will require them to return the data to you? The raw data, not the analysis. Mm -hmm. How do you structure that agreement? And do you attach that data in some way so that other researchers who access those patients get access to that derived data? The data that coming back, we would know how, how you know, we link all the samples back to the patients. And we also have like um, the master patient index engine that we do across cohorts. So even though patient enroll in one cohort and have samples in this one, and also do all lives in a different study, we can link all of that uh, patients together. So the more samples being utilized and the more survey patient take, the enrich, the more enriched the data will be. In terms of how the data coming back to us, we do provide exclusivity period depending on the type of project, whether it's a target investigations or non-targeted. Uh, so you can you know, be able to publish and you know, if it generate IP, you, know, you can go do anything that, that needs it to, to do before the, the raw data coming back to us. And again, it's, just a, it's a raw data that's generated that's coming back to the program. Yes, this is very nice. Uh, one of the questions I had for you is when, you, when a, a collaborator requests data and 
you approve that and says you deliver data to the cloud. How do you deliver that data? So the portal allow the data provisioning on the back end is all like have self service workflow that you can request. So the I2B2 give us ability to query the data based on the patients. And based on that list of patients, we actually provision everything that's that's related to that patient on the back end, generate the flat files, create hyperlink. And the researcher can download that. Correct. Yep. And they are the identify already. Um, the molecular data delivery right now is mostly done via Amazon S3 buckets. Thank you.